take a look at creating an orthographic drawing here in AutoCAD for the rod support. Um, inputting fractions with the mixed number, with the whole number in front of the fraction. You have to put a hyphen in between the whole number and the fraction. Inputting the fractions themselves, let's say 11 sixteenths, 11 divided by 16, you can put it in. If I want to type in 1 and 9 sixteenths, 1 hyphen 9 divided by 16. If you want to open up a, the quick CAC option, um, you can do that. If you want to convert these over, use a decimal equivalency chart, whatever your case is, but uh, you can input fractions. Mirroring. This part is symmetrical uh, in the top and the front view. So I'm going to set up here in order to mirror. Eventually, I'm going to highlight this just so I don't forget to come back and uh, delete it or use it as a line to mirror about. Um, so let's get to it. I got my boxes set up here, overall length, width, and height. Um, you can mirror left to right, up or down. So I'm just going to minimize this out. I'll mirror, in this case, left to right. You can mirror both views at the same time. So I'm going to keep that in mind. Um, you have all these holes. Don't do the work twice. Copy them, move them, rotate them, because you have to show your hidden line and center line construction. OK, let's start uh, sketching this one out. Actually, I'll just take these all off. Let's start with this one. We want an overall length of 1 and 9 sixteenths into where that cutout takes place. If I hit tab, I'll get the length of this one line. 1 tab, or hyphen, 9 sixteenths. Give me the length of the line. We'll come up 11 sixteenths. And we'll come over to the center, to the midline. We'll come up half an inch. And we'll come out, we need to come out a total of one inch. Since this is on the line to mirror about, only come out half, come up to the top and over three quarter. If you can convert it in your head, it's probably better off if you're typing in the decimals instead of the fractions. I know that the overall length is, or height is two. I want a half inch left over. So I'll just come down two and we'll knock this corner off. All right. That takes care of everything I know up to this point. We'll project up. We will project our hidden line. Again, I'm going to wait, well, I am, quite a while until I go to mirror this. If it is easier for you to mirror certain sections at a time, um, features of this part, please go ahead and mirror them little by little. Uh, 3 eighths is knocked off this corner at a 45 degree angle. The hole placement it is a half inch in and a half inch over. And these holes are a 7 sixteenths. There are multiple ways to do this. I'm just going to show a different way than some of my other videos. I'm going to make that 7 sixteenths diameter hole. And now I'm going to use this and move it. I'm not going to draw lines or a square or a rectangle to place it. I'll move it over half an inch, and then I'll move it again half an inch. Now, just another method. Don't have to use it. But for projecting my hidden line, center line construction in the opposing view, just another method. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to copy it straight down. Now, I have those quadrant points. And I'll delete the circle once I'm done. You do have to stretch that center line out quite far here. Even if you're using center two. Um, let's go 0.35. I don't think quarter enough, a quarter inch gives you enough to see your line pattern. And these two are the hidden lines. Okay, we have some information here in the right side view that we do need to obtain. 
All right, so that's the object line. This is going to be a hidden line. This is a straight projection right across. Hidden, hidden. We'll project over and down. We can use that same method for this hole. As long as I have a point of reference, I do have this object line for that 45 degree angle cut. All right. So since I've already made this, I don't want to do this work again. I want to select all this. I'm going to use a common point and I'm going to make a copy of it. I want to do that hidden line construction the second time. Okay. So there's the base. Now I have these holes and this long or big radius here at the top. We do know that this radius is 1 and 3 eighths. We know it's in the center. The radius is the distance from the center of the circle to the circumference. I'm going to draw a line at 1 and 3 eighths. This is the center for this radius circle. I want to knock these corners off. I'm going to come back here. I'm going to trim these off. Now I have the arc at the top. The distance up from the bottom to this half inch diameter hole. It is in the center. And that distance, oops, I lost it, is 1 and 13 sixteenths. 1 hyphen 13 divided by 16. That is the center to the half inch diameter hole. Okay. So this view is actually complete, but we still have the hidden line construction. I would avoid projecting up and over. You could use the method where you drag it and reference the circle. I'm just going to drag straight across. Just another way to do this. I do have that center line, not to the midpoint. I also have this object line at the top. So we'll take them off, we'll change these two. These are hidden. Center line, which we do have to extend out past the edge of the object. I think a quarter inch is sufficient here. It is. All right, I don't want to do this work again. I know it's at the midpoint at the top. So I'm going to take all this and I'm going to copy it at the midpoint. Now I have everything I need. I can mirror both views at the same time. I'm going to select it all and mirror. I do want to get rid of the line to mirror about. Uh, hidden lines. Got it. Center marks. Got it. All right. Dimensions for this one, we're going to do in fractions to a sixteenth of an inch. Fractional display. Format. A sixteenth of an inch. Okay. Everything here should be pretty straightforward in terms of dimensioning. The only dimensioning rule you will be breaking is this one, long extension lines. You want to avoid that. Um, I guess this one too. You don't want to dimension to a hidden line. That's our only option in the right side view. So I guess you're breaking those two. Other than that, Following our dimensioning rules, we can as not assume a feature centered, all dimensions to create or inspect the part. I'll stack these smaller dimensions inside of larger dimensions. In between the arrowheads or in between the extension lines, in the view that shows the shape the best. I'll keep going, dimensioning rules. 
Um, what do we need? Overall height. Quite a bit's going to take place in this right side view, so overall height here might not be bad. Okay, distance to the center. Got the little gap at the extension line. I need hole placement. Distance in. Distance back. Um, I need one of these one inch dimensions. No, I need them both. Okay, got to do the same thing on the other side. We cannot assume a feature is centered. That one we don't need. Sorry. In between the arrowheads, and I need a dimension of one. Okay, let's line these up a little better. Uh, 45 degree angle at 0.38. There's 0.38. I'll take an angular dimension at 45 degrees. And we have a couple diameter dimensions if it's a complete circle. And another complete circle. And we have a radius. Okay, that should uh, take care of it. Um, for the drawing on this one, we are looking at a scale of three to four. I'm just checking to see if I'm missing anything. Looks pretty good. Okay, so. That should take care of an orthographic drawing for the rod support in its entirety.